start with. Um, so you're not going to do, you're not going to do any of that. You have to get sworn in first. So we're going to do a swearing in ceremony for the mayor and council uh, and our tax collectors. We're going to do three different, three different ceremonies. Uh, yeah, uh, somewhere in front of the camera, if you don't mind. Let's see it. Okay. 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 That I will support, yeah. obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That I will discharge the duties of my office. That I will discharge the duties of my office. For the borough of Emmaus, Pennsylvania. For the borough of Emmaus, Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. Congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Anders. And Mr. Ladenberg, Mr. Mr. do you all want to at the same time? Again, getting you for your photographs here, make sure I'm not being blocked with my big bald head here. So, I, please state your name. I, Lady Anders, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend. That I that will support, support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution, Constitution of the United, United States, States of America, America and the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That I will discharge the duties of my office. And that, that I, will I will discharge the duties of my office for the borough of Emmaus, Pennsylvania. For the borough of Emmaus, Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. With fidelity. Go to your one step up. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That I will discharge the duties of my office. And that I will discharge the duties of my office. For the borough of Mass, Pennsylvania. For the borough of Mass, Pennsylvania. With fidelity. With fidelity. Thank you. Track of what you're all doing, East Penn Press, and now I know Councilman Hart has his tie to Schuylkill County, so you have to be careful with him. Yeah. <laughs> have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
like to call the January 3rd, 2022, the Minnesota Council Reorganization
Councilman Anders? Yes, uh, I just wanted to note that uh, NBC Today Show had a piece on our uh, amazing high school um, uh, team that, um, you know, uh, excuse me. And uh, it was a great piece on, on the uh, coach too. And um, the amazing school team, and congratulations to that once again. We actually shared the link to the girl's Facebook page, so I think the link is still is still good. It was very exciting. I saw the live and I watched it too. Yeah, it, 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 it was exciting. It showed the high school and it was, it was nice. Just one other note um, that Christmas tree pickups uh, will be this week and next week. Uh, public clerks will be out. They need to be out and back um, for the community pickup. Thank you. Did you say end bag? End bag. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. No bags. No bags. No bags. No bag. Anybody else with the community minutes to bring forward? All right. We have no special presentations. We do have the meeting minutes from December 20th, 2021 to approve. Does somebody have a motion to approve? Councilman Hart. Is there a second? Councilwoman Bob Gardner. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. We do have uh, one item for decision on a bid, and that is for um, awarding the bid for mobile office in the home for central station renovation. The office trailer is 28000 and the mobile home is $120,000. Uh, the Winning bid was by Phoenix uh, for those amounts. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve uh, those trailer purchases? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilwoman Mike Maneman. Any discussion? Uh, I'd like to thank our assistant borough manager, Sarah. I understand this is her in her hands and uh, she did really well considering it's a tough bind to, to do because they all have their own rules and stuff and how they sell. So thank you very much. Who made the who made the motion in second? So Councilman Hart and Councilwoman McMahon just a second. And Councilman Anders. Just one question. Um, after we're complete with these, are we going to sell them or we don't take them and use them? Uh, so that's something that the public safety committee and the budget and finance committee will both weigh in on. Um, uh, if you're asking for my opinion, uh, in all likelihood, I think what we would like to prefer to do is to remove some of the trailers that are in very poor shape down at the fire training grounds and replace them and make this a usable space down there. I think uh, before you make that decision, I would encourage maybe council members to go down there with the director of emergency services and actually observe the condition. Because it is a, it is a financial decision. So well, it's um, one of those the ones that we use during the uh... No, no, that's actually one of our better ones. So better one? yeah. The training one. Yeah, that's actually one of the better ones. <laughs> um, so, but I would encourage you before we make that decision, just to actually physically go down there and observe, look at what they're, and, and ask for a real proposal from the chief too, as to what he, he wants to use them for and what, what their purpose is going to be, because they're going to sit there and rot. We'll sell them and make some money off. If they're going to be utilized, which I believe that they will, um, then uh, you know they'll they'll explain that and then what we want to do with them. But it's, we have time to decide. Yeah, yeah, we have we have at least a year. Uh, we have at least a year. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Moving on to communications, we have four requests from the Emmaus Main Street program. First one being the 2022 farewell this summer, and they're requesting alcohol. The date is September 17th. Um, do we have any details on this? They're selling it on a triangle, and that's it. And I know they had their insurance provided. They, they have that in their notes here. Um, do we need any other information, or is that good enough? Yeah. Because um, if it's good enough, we can approve them tonight. It's, to me, it's, it's good enough. It's the same deal every year. I would just say that at the time of the event, we need. Uh, we need updated insurance. Okay. So would like some would somebody like to make a motion to approve alcohol 
or the 2022 farewell this summer um, on the triangle. Um, this is where I'm drawing a blank here. Contingent upon uh, providing updated insurance. There we go. Uh, motion, Councilwoman McManaman, second. Councilman Hart. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Uh, same request for old fashioned Christmas in 2022, December 3rd. And they're requesting alcohol for that. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. <coughs> discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. We also have a request for the 2022 Food Truck Festival in the Community Park, April 23rd, also requested for alcohol. Uh, is this a new event? It is. So do we need to uh, send it to Parks and Rec for setup, or are we just going to say work it with the public works? I would, I would ask that the Parks and Rec Committee discuss and review before you. Do we want to take care of the alcohol part right now, or we no. just take care of it all later? All agree. right, so we'll send this to the uh, Parks and Rec Committee. Uh, and we also have the Main Street program requesting 2022 East Penn Restaurant Week banner and fee waiver. Uh, does somebody like to make a motion to approve that? Councilwoman Council McManaman, seconded by Councilman Hart. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. No, no. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> And we are committed to other your other way fees for the main street partners. So just making sure that the rest change. I'm glad you asked because I thought of that, but I I assumed that we were allowed to since it was on here. So, uh, any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 So opposed. Seven nine. We also requested a reappointment to the Arts Commission by Patty Fernandez, to term expiring February 7th of 2025. That will be done. Yeah, we'll send it to the committee. Yeah, it will be good. For all engineers report, we have none. Solicitors report. Uh, thank you, welcome, Solicitor Mike. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that we'll review proposed bids on the borough building and we're going to report to Shane by the end of the month. Besides that, we have another solicitor's report tonight. Thank you. Unfinished business part one, new business, unfinished business part two. We have no items. We cleared that out last week. Uh, items not on the agenda. Anybody have anything to bring forward? Very none. Not a mayor's report. I have no report to say. Progress. Thank you. Under committee, committee reports, we have Public Works Committee, Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee, Parks and Recreation Committee, and Public Safety Committee that um, do not have any meeting minutes. So does anyone want to bring anything forward that is not listed here? Okay. Hearing none, that takes us to the General Administration Committee which is myself, we have some items to handle. Uh, resolution 2022-1, which is the appointments. And I'll read the list. Ambulance Corps Chief, Matthew West, Animal Control Officer, April Shio. Assistant Borough Manager, Sarah Jarrett Eaton. Borough Manager Secretary, Shane Pepe. Borough Solicitor, Gross McKinley. Uh, they might point tax collector, Norris McLaughlin, that the deputy police chief, Jason Apgar, director of finance slash treasurer, Christine Snyder, certified public accountant, Campbell, Rappel, and Uritzitz. Civil Service Commission, solicitor, Davidson and McCarthy. Codes enforcement slash public works, inspector, Robert Hammond, code enforcement officer, Brian Billheimer, Earned Income and Local Services Tax Office, Berkheimer. 
Deputy Director of Emergency Services and also makes uh, Emergency Management Coordinator, Keith Miller. Primary Engineer, Art Consulting, Utilities and Alternate Engineer, Hanover Engineering, Fire Chief slash Director of Emergency Services, John Price, Fire Inspector, Ryan Crawford, Health Officer, Gary Ritter, Pension Consultant, Police and Non-Uniform, Bockenhoff Benefits Group. Per capita tax office, Berkheimer. Police Chief until February 1st, 2022, because he's retiring, Troy Shots. Public Works Director until February 4th, 2022, because he's retiring, John Deschala. Public Works Director, effective February 5th, 2022, Stanley Rugulis, or Rugis, uh, Sewage Enforcement Officer, Jacob A. Shrey, Gregory Gray, Christopher Taylor, Special Labor Counsel, Campbell Durant, Beatty, Palumbo and Miller, Zoning Hearing Board Solicitor, Ronald Corkery. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve resolution 2022-1? So Motion by Councilman Warrick, seconded by Councilman Anders. Uh, any discussion or comments? I just would like to make a comment that my son works for, he started there about four weeks ago at Odd Consulting. And uh, I've been told that I, I still can approve this. Uh, he's an hourly employee. So with that being said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. That leads us, leads us to the vacancy board, uh, reappointment of John Stover with the term expiring January 1st, 2023. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that? So, Councilman Hart, second by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? I didn't see Chad right up. I'm assuming he said I, 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 I said I. Okay. Yeah. Usually a yellow square comes up when you say something, and I didn't see one. So, all right, seven, seven um, eyes. 2022 Humane Society contract. He received the contract, and it's recommended by the General Administration Committee. Um, this is an annual contract that we have with them. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the 2022 contract? Councilwoman McManaman, second by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Oh, we went through a interview process and we have a recommendation to hire uh, from the General Administration Committee to hire Sherry Palinkas, a resident of Borough Vimeus, for the Police Department Data Entry Clerk. Uh, Contingent upon, upon background, finishing that, and that would be uh, also following the, the uh, Secretary's Union contract guidelines. Right. So, somebody like to make a motion to approve that? Councilman Hart, second by Councilwoman McManaman. Any discussion or questions? All right, All right hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Let's close. There are seven eyes. Well, as you know, we are in negotiations with the Public Works Department uh, for their union contract. And uh, at this point, we're asking for a 30 day extension. Uh, it was recommended by the General Administration Committee, and the union is in agreement with it. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that? Councilwoman Baumgartner, seconded by. Councilwoman McManaman. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Mr. Mr. President. Yes. Just a comment. Um, I, this is a, a legal question, I suppose. You'd like to know. Is there any way in which we can um, keep the group at their current salary rates if they extend the, uh, into, uh, into February? Well, we probably would vote. Well, the first recommendation we made for a 30-day 
so that anything that we agree upon in the contract will be retroactive to January 1st. Yeah. So, so in other words, but I think what Mr. Hart and Mr. Hart and I were discussing, it, if we get into February 1st, uh, I would say all, all bets are off and we force them to negotiate beyond, uh, you know, we force them to negotiate that, that we're not going to come back and give them a retroactive pay rate back to January 1st. So that's, they, what, that's what we're going to get. So if they agree on the third week, they're not going to get that raise in the first two weeks. Well, I think what 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 the what you're you're voting on or what you voted on here is that if we do agree to something within a 30 day period, then it goes back retroactive to January one. But if we drag into February, we don't just want to automatically go into this uh, okay. and give them a retroactive. That's not something we would vote on now though. No, I, I think he's just asking for it's a it's a heads up and I wanted to know if the solicitor is there something is there anything preventing us from doing that? I'll look into it by Jason Mar and Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. Right. Nope. The Go friend. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aye. Right. Aye. Right. But we didn't hear. He did. Oh, we didn't. That was that third time. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. okay. I think I think um, Chris wanted to say something. You still I want to talk? When the council members talk i know it's hard we're supposed to look at people when we talk but if they could talk straight ahead it does make it a little bit easier to to hear there i did hear everything mr hart and mr andrew said but it's a little bit muffled when they're looking at the people in the front just as a heads up are you fair enough are you, you hearing me all right i'm hearing all three four of you in the front very well okay thank you we're, we're learning as we go again. <laughs> yeah, I can. Oh, I could hear it yet. It is just a little bit muffled, though. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, last on the uh, general administration agenda is to hire Eisenhofer as our PFOS legal counsel. I believe it's supposed to be PFAS, not OS. No, it's, it's both, actually. It's both. Okay. It's Grant, Grant Eisenhofer. And uh, would somebody make a motion to hire them to represent us? Councilman Hart, second and vice council, woman Baumgartner. Any discussion? Do we want to explain further? Uh, I would just say contingent upon final negotiations of terms. A con uh, contingent upon the final negotiation of terms. Uh, would you like to amend that? I, I, I want to amend. We'd like to amend your second. Okay, so amended. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Uh, there's some meeting notes. You want to go into that just a little bit? I can't. Yeah, go ahead. Explain that. So, you know, uh, just for the public's clarification, um, Grant and Eisenhofer are uh, specialized environmental attorneys. They've represented DEP in, in a number of different environmental matters. Um, this entire PFAS issue that we're dealing with, uh, we feel that um, uh, firefighting foam companies in particular have a lot of liability with, with the pollution of, of groundwater, uh, and we are going to explore all legal avenues with them uh, to hold these companies accountable. Uh, so this would be the firm that uh, uh, specializes in this kind of matter. They're representing several other uh, municipalities across Pennsylvania. Uh, regarding the same. Thank you. I report progress, budget and finance committee. Chairman Dufresne. You can hear me all right? Yeah, we hear yeah. you great. Okay, so the first thing we have is a resolution for the low income reduced refuse rate. Before I make a motion, I'll just have Shane give a little high level uh, on it. So uh -huh. the discount refuse rate uh, is something that uh, budget finance has talked about throughout the course of 2021. Um, as, as promised, I gave it to them at our last committee meeting of the year. Um, essentially, what we're doing is, you know, as we examined the the, uh, the policy that we had, we had realized that really there was no rhyme or reason to uh, the income levels that were, were in the policy. And, and quite honestly, they had been established for more than 12, 13 years. Um, and then what we did was we looked at our annual hardship policy and how that was written, because we had just amended that, you know, four or five years ago, 
uh, and uh, we made that in line with poverty rates uh, through the Department of Health and Human Services, and we did percentages based on the poverty rates uh, and the discounts uh, based on those percentages. And we felt that we need to be more consistent across the board. That's how we're, we're calculating discounts for um, uh, in those department and, and other policies that we just need to make it consistent. So what we did was we made a more consistent um, discount rate for, for refuse is, is what we did. And we did it on a sliding scale based on whatever the current year's um, uh, health and human services uh, uh, poverty guideline levels were, uh, is, how we, is how we establish it. So every year that rate um, uh, can change based on what the uh, acceptable poverty levels are and or based on uh, what our current refuse rate is as well. If that rate goes up or down, and that, that rate can, can go up or down the swing with. That's how the resolution and the policy was built. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the resolution I'll 2000? I'll make a motion. Three. I'll make a motion to approve. Second by Councilman Hart. Any more discussion? I'd like to thank Shane for putting this together. It's, it's something that, you know, we have so much going on right now. Um, but hopefully it helps some of our residents out. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Okay, next we have the non-union employee health care policy. So this is just making the policy match uh, what council approved. Uh, in the budget here. So I'll make a motion uh, to adopt the non-union employee health uh, care policies. Motion by Councilman Dufresne. Second by Councilman Anders. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed? There are seven ayes. All right, next we have uh, the tax collector request for approval of fees for services. This is some increases. The increases are just taking um, the tax certification from $20 to $30, the non-sufficient funds checks from $25 to $30, duplicate bills from $3 to $4, and the copies would then remain at $0.25 cents per copy. And this kind of gets us in line with, you know, what the norm in the industry is, and it kind of matches East Penn School District uh, policy. So I will place that in the form of a motion to accept the tax collector's request for fee increases. Motion. By Councilman DeFrain. Is there a second? Councilwoman McManaman. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Okay, next we have the police pension cost of living adjustment. Uh, we did get a, a request to consider a COLA adjustment for the police pension. Our committee did, the budget committee did, and finance committee did talk about it. And um, the committee voted to deny the request. We felt that they received the COLA increase through their health insurance increases uh, each year. As so if anyone else feels differently, uh, this is an opportunity to raise it. Uh, if not, Shane, maybe you wanna expand upon what we do provide for them that would equal kind of to a COLA. Well, um, yeah, you know, so they have the right as a borough to do a cost of living adjustment increase for police pension, you know, based on a formula, uh, and you haven't done it in quite some time. Uh, and, and I've been very open about this, and I said it at the committee meeting the other day, and that is, you know, one of the things that they, you know, and when we get the, we get the same letter every year from, from an employee, and it's a, and it's a complaint, um, or, or a former retired employee, not a current employee. Um, and, and I understand that, but uh, what they don't do is they don't pay towards their health care. It's free. They've never paid towards their health care. It's free. Uh, but our cost certainly doesn't go down on that health care. Our cost goes up every year. So, you know, I, you know, the, the argument that I make is you get a cost of living adjustment every year. We're paying more for your health care um, because that fee certainly isn't going down, but yet you continue to get a higher quality health care, uh, if anything. Um, and so we're paying a cost of living adjustment by paying an increased cost to your health care every single year that you're that you're on and then you retire. So, um, so I, I think it's important to be able to, to say that publicly that you know, while you continue to maybe deny the COLA and the pension, 
uh, the taxpayers are still paying for increased costs for retirement for retirees because the health care cost certainly is not going down. Um, so that was the justification that, that I think we had at the committee level uh, when we discussed it, uh, that, you know, they, we are paying a call in just in a different way. Thank you for explaining that so well. All right, Chris, back to you. Okay. All right, the next we have the sewer fund transfer uh, and reimbursement. So we knew that the grant that we were being reimbursed for $158,791 might straddle years here uh, from 2021 to 2022 until we received it. That did happen. We did not receive it in December here. So just in case our sewer fund does end negative in 2021, uh, we need to I'm going to make a motion that if we are negative for 2021, we have a cash shortfall in the sewer fund, that we transfer money from the general fund to cover any sewer fund shortage. And then in 2022, when we receive the grant, we reimburse the general fund for whatever money we had to advance at the end of 2021. So that's in the form of a motion from me. Motion by Councilman DeFran, is there a second? Second. Councilman Ballard. Oh, you second by Councilman Bowie. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 There's seven aye. All right, then you can see the significant revenue expenses for 2021. And then the last item for action here is resolution 2022-2, resolved by Borough Council to authorize payment of the January 3rd, 2022 bill list as follows. Bill list $107,797.07. Payroll number 26, $167,684.83. Payroll taxes, $54,510.68 for a total of $329,992.58 done this 3rd of January, 2022. And I place that in the form of a motion. Motion by Councilman Dufresne, is there a second? Councilman Hart, any question on the bill list? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. All right, then you can see the meeting notes from December 30th meeting. Unless there's any questions, I report progress. Thank you. Uh, and Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, I'm assuming you didn't have anything either to bring forward. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, so future committee appointments. I am going to keep everything the same. And uh, after our meeting, everybody needs to get together and decide when we're going to meet so that we can get our dates and times to Shane. He gets some advertising and we can meet as soon as possible to keep our agendas moving forward. So, Moving on on the agenda, we have four, three sets of board and commission meeting notes, which leads us to personal appeals part two. Matthew, do you have an appeal? Hearing none, do any of our virtual guests uh, will have you unmuted. If you have an appeal, please state your name and what your appeal is and where you're from. Anybody? Hearing none, we'll allow her to remute them. And that leads us to the borough manager's report. Um, well, so first of all, happy new year. As everyone knows, we're in a new facility. Uh, tonight, I want to thank St. John's UCC for their hospitality. Um, you know, we're going to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this little speaker that we have here is working out pretty well. So we'll, we'll keep using something similar to this. Um, uh, our temporary facility uh, on South 10th Street is up and running. Uh, we need to put a sign probably outside pointing people to it. So we have, we have, some, we have some things here and there. Um, I want to thank Councilman Labenberg um, for finding a, uh, a, a new conference table for us. Although uh, on New Year's Eve, I think if uh, I would have seen it, I would have hit him. Um, it's a beautiful table. It weighs 400 pounds, and I had to climb through third story of the building uh, no, with, our new, with our new public works director to drag that thing down three flights of steps. 
Um, so, uh, but it is it is very nice, and we do have a, a nice little conference table over there. And chairs, a building and chairs. So, so thank you. How many chairs were there then? Uh, I think there's I think there's ten. I think there's ten. So, and then, uh, I don't know if you mentioned, but they were free. Yeah. Oh. Yep. They gave it to us for free. I found that on uh, Marketplace. Um, so a couple other things first, uh, uh, COVID, uh, you know, and the variant uh, is carrying through the borough. Um, uh, our ambulance chief has informed me that the, uh, the number of uh, COVID positive or COVID system, uh, symptomatic patients is skyrocketing. Uh, with that said though, the number of employees that have symptoms uh, or have tested positive is also skyrocketing. The number of family members of Council members of employees of volunteers, those numbers are also skyrocketing. So um, effective tomorrow, um, and I would imagine you're, you're fine with this, but I'm going to reinstitute the mask rule um, for all of our employees in every department. Uh, it's not optional, it's not up to the department managers, it's our call. Um, what about uh, outside? Uh, <clears throat> I believe that uh, all visitors into the building will have to be required to wear masks. Any interaction that any of our employees have with the public, they will be required to wear masks. With that said, I've got a very big concern for our EMS staff right now, and that is uh, making sure they have proper supplies. Uh, we are, uh, we do have enough N95 masks right now, but we're also going to upgrade the type of masks that they're using to a, a reusable type of mask. We're going to pay a little bit more money for it, but right now, COVID-95 masks our COVID, uh, uh, the, the COVID uh, masks uh, for the N95s has they skyrocketed in price for the last two weeks. Uh, you're now at like a dollar five a mask. It was way down at like 60 cents. Um, so we, we did order today, we did an emergency order on a higher level mask for the EMS uh, department uh, as we have people you know, that are being exposed over there. So. Uh, we did make that. We did make that order and say we do have plenty. We have several thousand of the KN95, the paper masks, those kinds of masks for our everyday employees that are doing with public every day. You know the disposable kinds of masks. So we do have plenty, plenty of the supply. We do have plenty of sanitizer. You know we we bought in bulk um, enough that if we did have a wave like this, we would be able to supply our, our team with with the supplies. But um, uh, it's time to kind of step up our game again because uh, I have two DPW employees that went out today. Uh, one tested positive, the other one we're pretty sure. Uh, so, uh, and, and and we have at least one office staff member that's not feeling well. So it's uh, it's starting again. Um, so we're gonna make sure that we, you know, unfortunately we're not out ahead of it, but we're gonna react to it as quickly as we can. The second thing that I want to tell you is, uh, you know, we had our pre-bid meeting for uh, the asbestos removal. Uh, and those bids are, are coming in. Uh, tomorrow, we have our pre-bid meeting for the uh, major construction project uh, for the uh, for the three buildings. So that pre-bid meeting is at the old town hall. Uh, I don't know what time it is tomorrow. I think it's Hi. ten. Ten o'clock. So, if any of uh, any council members uh, want to uh, want to attend that, you're more than welcome. Um, the other thing is uh, at 11:30, uh, there's a grand opening for Burger King. So, I just need to know who can make it because the mayor is not going to be able to attend. Uh, somebody from council can can make I, it. I uh, uh, reply on the. Okay, but but we have something for them. So if okay. you can if you can make it, that'll free me up for another meeting. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, so we'll we'll have you we'll have you take that. Um, other than that, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, or I'll report progress. Thank you. Under President's business, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Dufresne and Councilman Dahlia for uh, just being safe, and considering others. Uh, so I appreciate that. And uh, with that being said. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilman Hart, second by Councilwoman Baumgartner. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no.
Board. Seven ayes, meeting adjourned at 746.